सहनावत सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीरवाहै तेजस्वीनावदी तमस्तुमाशावै ओं शांति 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 अनसेल्फिश डू यू बिकम self sufficient first clarification by becoming unselfish do you become self sufficient yes that is the only way you become self sufficient self sufficiency means you are not dependent hmm? self sufficiency self sufficiency means you are not dependent you can help others you can be grateful to grateful to others there are 99% of the aspect in life where we necessarily have to go and take guidance from somebody again i repeat there are 99% of the areas in life where everybody has to go for guidance i have to go to a lawyer for guidance i have to go to the chartered accountant for guidance i have to go to the doctor for guidance similarly i have to keep going to the shastras again and again and again for for guidance that that seeking guidance can never be avoided the taking guidance can never be avoided till you hit the level of perfection till you hit the level of self realization taking guidance cannot be avoided and what we mean by taking guidance is taking guidance to handle your mind what we mean by guidance is taking guidance to handle your mind an enlightened person if he has a legal issue he can't he has to go to the lawyer only if he has a if he has a passport issue he has to go to the passport office only you follow what i am saying therefore self sufficiency means not dependent which is distinct and different from seeking guidance we are able to understand the difference between the two seeking guidance is different self sufficiency is different self sufficiency means you are not emotionally dependent seeking guidance is because nobody can be all knowing we able to understand the difference seeking guidance is necessary because we can never be all knowing but we all can become emotionally self sufficient so when we say you become self sufficient by unselfishness you will become emotionally not dependent you follow otherwise nobody feels lack of self self sufficiency for going for guidance you will never feel going to a lawyer as a dependency you will never feel going to a doctor as a dependency do you because that's how life is till i die you have to keep going to the lawyers auditors everybody for for things you follow what i'm saying but there 
you are going that guidance is not that dependent because it's it's very specific to something it's an issue that you have to go sorted and you and you come back you are not you, you don't get emotionally dependent you go to a lawyer for some legal issue two weeks later you say can we meet for can we meet for some coffee can we go on a holiday together if you ask that to the lawyer it means you have become it means you have become dependent it means you have become emotionally dependent are able to follow seeking guidance is a fact of life understand the difference between the two you have to necessarily seek guidance and that is the fact of life distinct and different from that is an emotional dependence so so in vedanta in this classroom when we talk about self sufficiency we mean you are not emotionally dependent on anyone when you are not emotionally dependent on anyone you are a pillar of strength and you can give some strength to somebody else so unselfishness means not only you are dependent on others you will be able to give some strength to others that is called self sufficiency you understand the difference seeking guidance can never be seeking guidance can never be avoided because there are so many aspects in life that we don't that we can never ever know so in those areas i necessarily have to take that so self sufficiency means you are not emotionally dependent second self sufficiency means your state of mind is not decided by the other that's what self sufficiency is all about again i repeat self sufficiency means your state of mind He is not decided by the other, meaning you are dependent on the other to make you laugh, and the other is the one who makes you cry also. This is called dependency. Again, I repeat, dependency means you are dependent on the other to you are dependent on the other to make you laugh, to keep you cheerful. You are dependent on the other. when the other can make you laugh the other can make you cry also you follow what i'm saying you can't say i will be dip- i will be dependent make me only i'm dependent on others to make me laugh but i will be self sufficient so that nobody can make me cry this possibility doesn't exist if you are dependent on somebody to keep you cheerful that somebody can take away your cheer also if you are dependent on somebody to make you laugh that somebody can make you cry also so self sufficiency means what this emotional dependency you don't you don't have you follow this is what unselfishness does to you so not only you are self sufficient you will become a source of strength to somebody how do you become a source of strength to somebody the other is so convinced that you will not exploit the other that is what strength strength means you can you can get closer to somebody and you are so convinced that the other will not the other is not going to exploit you that is the strength that you are giving to somebody opposite of that is you are scared to get close to anybody because you can end up getting exploited you follow or there is always something in return that you have to there is always in something in return you have to give you have to which will be demanded from you not out of gratitude you will be forced to you will be threatened you will be forced to give something in return in unselfishness this is the strength you give 
are able to follow what is the strength you give to the other the other will be very comfortable because they know that you don't have any axe to grind in relation to them in relation to them you don't want anything you follow therefore this is how self sufficient this is what is meant by self sufficiency which is which will arise out of unselfishness so distinct and different from that is seeking seeking guidance see you can go to people for two reasons you can go to people for guidance or you can go to the other for emotional support again i repeat you can approach people for two things one you can go to somebody for guidance another is make me happy keep me happy we all we all approach human beings with either one of the two you follow first thing is i go to somebody and say make me make me happy keep me keep me happy make me happy is one reason for me to associate another reason that i can associate is i want some guidance now self sufficiency means what here not the second thing that is simple ego to say that to say that i i don't need uh, guidance from anybody i can take care of myself is a simple it it just a simple uh, stupid idiotic ego all of them because you necessarily have to take guidance so self sufficiency doesn't mean i will not go for guidance self sufficiency means i will not tell the other make me make me happy in unselfishness you will be able to make the others happy selfishness is going to the other and say make me happy unselfishness is you can make the other happy how do you make the other happy you are very presence you are very association you are very thought is a is a source of strength to somebody you call what i'm saying this is what is called unselfishness unselfish unselfishness means the thought of you is a source of strength to somebody when do you become a strength to somebody when they know that you are not going to be exploited we are scared to show affection why the moment you show affection you are immediately either way also isn't it the moment if somebody shows some affection immediately we want to immediately what happens the moment somebody shows affection immediately what happens anybody somebody shows affection what happens you take advantage ram subramanian not at woken up still sleep 8 o'clock i think you are sleep expect more and more the moment somebody shows affection immediately what happens the moment somebody shows affection you will simply get attached obsessed somebody shows genuine affection you will get attached you will get obsessed very difficult is to not to get attached taking advantage means you will get attached and then out of attachment you will you will take advantage ram subramanian nadupra or mukhyamana step irukuda adha the the crux is that step in between if somebody shows affection immediately you will get immediately you will get attached immediately you will get obsessed out of that attachment and obsession you, you will start taking advantages actually what is taking advantage taking advantage la onnume kediyadhu inga you will only say now that you have shown affection to me ensure that you keep ensure that you continue to me and where yaar gittum pokudathu 
Now that you have shown affection to me, continue showing it to me and ensure that you don't ensure that it is not shared. Mm -hmm. Self-sufficiency arises from a deep conviction. Self-sufficiency is a knowledge. Unselfishness arises from a deep conviction. What is the conviction? Love shared is not love diminished. Love shared is not love diminished. Very difficult to accept it. Very difficult when you are obsessed to somebody. If you are not obsessed, then it is very nice to hear. When you are obsessed to somebody, it is very difficult to accept it. This is called self-sufficiency. You follow what I am saying? Mm -hmm. Guidance we have to keep. Guidance we have to keep going. Because we, life always puts us in the situation of not knowing so many things. You have to take. You follow? And then the follow-up thing that she asked is about detachment. Two questions. One is about unselfishness. What is the next one? Detachment. Will unselfishness lead to detachment? There is no direct cause and effect relationship between unselfishness and detachment. Don't bring in a cause and effect relationship. Unselfishness is the cause. Detachment is the effect. Don't bring in cause and effect relationship. Detachment is a, a complete different thing altogether. What is detachment? Detachment is the ability to witness. A Detachment means a non-interfering, a non-interfering attitude towards everything that happens in life. That's detachment, a non-interfering attitude. Whatever happens to you and whatever happens around, you be a detachment means sakshi. Detachment means sakshi, witnessing. You follow. Detachedly, you may do some action. That's a different story altogether. But what is detachment? Detachment means a non-interfering a, a non-interfering attitude. Very difficult is to have genuine non-self, uh, genuine unselfish love and not interfere. That's why it's two pedals. Unselfishness and detachment are two pedals. See, you will not interfere only when you are indifferent. When you are indifferent, you will not, you will not interfere. When there is love and affection, you will want to, you will want to interfere. So, what is this detachment? It's a combination of two different aspects in the human, which is both almost seem to be very difficult to exist together, coexist. Detachment and unselfishness. So, so don't say unselfishness is the cause, detachment is the effect. Of the two, what to start with? Unselfishness. Don't start with detachment. You will, end, you will end in detachment. You cannot start with detachment. You will end in detachment. Hmm. Unselfishness means an emotion and affection that, oh my God, somebody is in pain, somebody is in suffering. You quickly want to, you quickly want to see what you can do to help the other to, to get out. This is unselfishness. Huh? Are you okay till now? What is detachment? 
what does detach mean? In the same scenario, I'm talking about not some not something else. In the same scenario, what is detachment? This emotion should not rush me into this. This emotion of wanting to help should not make you feverish, rush into helping. You follow what I'm saying? The feverishness of wanting to help, the feverishness of interference, detachment will, will take care. Otherwise, we are so feverish, we just rush into, we just rush into help. That unselfishness lacks the, it is detachment that gives unselfishness the real strength. That's why both are two different things. One gives strength to the other. You follow? It is detachment that gives strength to the unselfishness. What is that unselfishness? That person needs, that person needs help. But that person can only take, you know, there are different levels of when somebody is sick, there are different levels by which you give water. To some, you have to only give one teaspoon of water. You know, to some, you only have to take the water in a... You have to take water in a cotton ball and just... And just, that's it. You follow what I'm saying? That person is looks like that looks like the person is dying of, dying of thirst. And you can't give that person one whole glass of water because that very glass of water is what is going to kill that person. So it is detachment that tells you. It is detachment that tells you. It is detachment that tells you how much to interfere, how much not to interfere, how much to wait, where you should quickly interfere, where you should not quickly interfere and just wait. Detachment gives you this clarity. Otherwise, just unselfishness is, just unselfishness is blinding. Just get into, simply get into things without, without knowing without knowing my strength, without knowing the strength of the, without knowing how much the other can take. Detachment brings you this clarity. This is my, this is my strength. This is the need. This is what this person can, can take. Detachment gives you this clarity. You follow what I'm saying? Of the two, where you should start with detachment or, or unselfishness, start with Start with unselfishness. Why we are saying start with unselfishness is because anyway you are in contact with the knowledge, that is the assumption. Anyway you are in contact with the knowledge and you are going to keep studying and listening to this continuously, that, that, that builds up your knowledge. You follow what I mean? Under this assumption, the answer is become practice Unselfishness. Detachment is Detachment. Detachment is not self-realization. Detachment is not self-realization. Self-realization is something that is beyond the dictionary now. At any given point of time, it's not only now, because see. Defining what self-realization is, defining what God is. <clears throat> defining God, defining self-realization, defining the Guru, all are one and the same. They cannot be, they cannot be defined. Because you define one, the other two gets defined automatically. You follow what I am saying? So in the true sense of that term, we, we can, in a very loose way, we can call it as liberation. 
freedom from samsara freedom from all, all that we can keep talking in a very very in a very limited sense we can cop, we, we can keep talking about realization like but remember in the true sense of that term never say unselfishness is is uh, um, detachment is self realization a self realized person may be detached sorry self realized person is detached not maybe i made a mistake self realized person is is detached unless you are unselfish you can't even accept a detachment even to accept a detachment you have to be unselfish because you will want detachment means you not suffocating the other and the other doesn't suffocate you you follow detachment means what i will not suffocate i will not uh, i will tell the other you need not suffocate to me but generally you are you understand detachment now what is selfishness you should not suffocate me but i will suffocate you huh are you able to understand how <laughs> this is selfishness selfishness is what you should not suffocate me you should not suffocate me but i will suffocate you what is detachment suffocation should not happen or other detachment is it's not difficult at all but very difficult it's not difficult at all but again it's very very difficult yeah otherwise everybody says ah i will be detached but if the other says i am detached from you you will get hurt you will say i am detached hmm you will say i am detached ah correct shankar purida i am detached from my wife and family sir wow family says i am detached from srl shankar the family can i all up anir kran sir how much i have how much i have sacrificed for this family what all i did what all i did for this family now they are for you it is detachment when the other does it you see it as indifference are you able to follow when you do it it will be called as detached you will you, you will self, you will self certify yourself as you are a detached person when the other does it you will see it as indifference are you able to follow detachment is very detachment means this you will not you will not suffocate and you tell the other you need not i understand you you need not suffocate me are you able to follow opposite of that is opposite of that is this have you ever observed this to understand selfishness understand it like that it's very simple when you are lonely you want a company ha huh? when you are lonely you will want a company when company comes you will say i want my space ha huh? when the company comes you will say give my give my space when your space is given when the space is given you will say no 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 i am feeling lonely are you able to follow it means what it means it means what when you are in need the company must come once your need is fulfilled when you are in need the other should come and when your need is fulfilled leave 
இதான் சார் ஒண்டர்ஃபுல் லிவிங் டுகெதர் சார் நோ நோ கமிட்மெண்ட் வாட் அ ஒண்டர்ஃபுல் லைஃப் இட் இஸ் டு பி அ நான் கமிட்டட் லைஃப் ஐ சைட் அப்பா we want to live together without commitment sir i said perfect ideal life is that but the problem is both don't know what is commitment both don't know what is selfishness complete selfishness looks like hmm. fully selfish to the core looks like detachment it means what are you able to follow i will when you need me sorry when i need you you come when my need is over you leave okay in turn if the other person says i need you also what will you say ah that is suffocation that is suffocation why because when the other person is in need you may not have that need you may not have that need just as when when you are hungry the other need not be hungry when the other is not hungry when the other is hungry you may not be hungry you are able to follow that's all the problem what is detachment detachment is a simple understanding what i will not i will not suffocate you don't bother about don't bother about suffocating don't bother about suffocating me you have your you need not suffocate me in detachment you don't discard the love of the other in detachment you tell the other you need not suffocate the love is not discarded the suffocation is not necessary in selfishness suffocation is necessary in selfishness suffocation is necessary are able to follow hmm hmm okay so you said that selfishness you don't suffocate me but i will say and detachment is suffocation should not happen hmm. in unselfishness what happens to suffocation in unselfishness you are you are making the f in unselfish the clarification is the clarification that she is asking is in what happens to the suffocation in unselfishness unselfishness is the very effort you are making to drop your attitude of wanting to suffocate the other what is unselfishness the very need the very need of suffocating the other so unconsciously you have been suffocating the other unselfishness is a conscious effort of what yes i will not i will i will retain the love part and i will get rid of the suffocation part Hmm? love plus suffocation equals attachment selfishness understand it like that you have love suffocation remove the suffocation the effort that you make to get rid of the suffocation is unselfishness hmm? it will not go naturally it comes through effort that's the effort you love and not suffocate suffocation is using the other in unselfishness in unselfishness you are taking a a vow what is the vow i will not i will not use the other that is unselfishness selfishness is using the other unselfishness is i will not use the other okay hmm. 
from selfishness to avocation she has uh, she she went to the upanishad directly the clarification that she is asking is from unselfishness you become selfless and and in selflessness you do nididhyasana and then you attain self realization is the sequence correct yes that's the right sequence theoretically it is correct that's how you reach yeah selflessness unselfish to selflessness in the selflessness in the state of selflessness nididhyasana self realization correct detachment you start right from unselfishness itself detachment is the common thread that goes from the beginning till the end in the beginning you are trying to detach from selfishness to become unselfish and then you are trying to detach yourself from unselfishness itself so detachment is that which goes right through that that unseen string that holds the various aspect of the spiritual sadhana the unseen string that holds the various aspect of the sadhana is detachment, detachment. it is it is detachment that holds everything together so you need not directly talk about you need not directly worry about detachment if you keep doing the sadhanas rightly detachment keeps happening by itself you follow detachment is another word for vedanta is detachment another word for religion is detachment another word for spirituality is detachment all are synonyms vedanta religion detachment all are spiritual all are all should be used as synonyms you follow Just one last question. Ah, one last question. Yes. Say the realization is peace, not uh, happiness, or tolerance, not uh, not higher happiness, or not going further. Yeah. Now the question is, what is the state of self-realization? Is it not the high of happiness, not the low of sorrow? Is it that state in between where? it's not the high of happiness and not the low of sorrow is that self realization at this point of at this point in time understand self realization like this there is still much more to it but at this point of time understand it like that it's correct i'm carefully saying i'm not saying this is it i'm saying at this level of understanding you you can take self realization means not the high of not the not the excited high nor the depressed low it's it's not the depressed to low not the excited high there is the sine wave that goes up and down there is a sine wave that goes up and down and then in that sine wave that goes up and down there is a there is a line in the center that is self realization as of now and it is much 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 more so extraordinary that it is that state of self realization mm, you follow but right now we can understand it like that. yes mind will go through these fluctuations you understand mind will go through these fluctuations and you will be unaffected by it hmm? scrutinize your person you will never be scrutinizing the person only venkat hmm? okay. and our one class keeper our one Sir, endo varma text bolliye poliye he will say. 
So, Venkat, scrutinize your person only. Yeah. We have been scrutinizing persons only till now. And we will continue to scrutinize more. Last week, we scrutinized at the level of the intellect. Last week, we, we, we scrutinized at the level of the intellect. Still, few more is there. Mind is there. Body is there. And I don't know what else, uh, what else is there. Because I, I remember in the class last week, we went in the reverse order. Material. Intellect. Ah, material, physical, emotional and intellect. We covered the intellect first. What is intellect? What is scrutinizing the person at the level of the intellect? See, at the level of the intellect, you understand two things. One is when you are praised, one part of you is praised. When you are denounced, one part of you is denounced. When you are honored, one part of you is honored. When you are dishonored, one part of you is, is dishonored. For you can never be praised as a whole, neither can you be denounced as a whole. You follow what I am saying? But the ego takes praise as a whole and ego takes denouncing as a whole. That's why you get, uh, uh, that's why you go through these fluctuations. So what is scrutinizing your person means when somebody is praising you, you understand one part of you is praised. When somebody is dishonoring you, what you should understand? Oh, why they, why they talked about me like that, sir? They didn't talk about you. One part of you is spoken. Hmm? And that part of you that was spoken is a fact. Where is the problem? You follow? One, one part of you is spoken about you. And then, and then it is a fact. And then, and then there is no need to pay about it. Okay. Have you ever observed when somebody praises you, you will never say it's their opinion. When somebody denounces you, you will say Huh? You will say, I don't care. Huh? You ever observed? When somebody praises you, you should say, I don't care. When somebody denounces you, you should do a cross check and say, maybe I'm having that flaw in me and I'll try to correct it. Now you are on the right path. But then we do exactly the opposite. Hmm? When somebody denounces you, you will say, oh, people are entitled to their opinions. I don't care what they know about me. When somebody is praising you, will you ever say, what do they know about me? Uh -huh. If you are really objective, what will you say? Thank God they don't know about me fully, they are praising. <laughs> if they know about me fully, even the little bit of praise here and there that I am getting also, I will not. I don't deserve are you able to follow? This is scrutinizing your person at the level of the at the level of the intellect. You follow? Each of us feels superior. Each of us are factually superior in some aspect. Meaning, we have a talent. We, we have a talent. In, in that sense, we are definitely everybody is superior in one area. Where it becomes a problem is when we try to convince the world that this is the really the only thing that matters. That is where the problem comes. We all have some, see, we all have some strength. We all have what they call as strength and weaknesses. No, they'll say, talk about your strength, talk about your weaknesses, they say no. And talk about the weaknesses, the world will say, oh, uh, my weakness is, I am a perfectionist. That's insanity. Yeah, that's not a weakness. Yeah, what is your weakness? Very difficult is to say what your weakness is. But very easy to say what all your strengths are. 
So you follow what I'm saying? So what is an what is an honest intellectual understanding about yourself? A honest intellectual understanding about your own self is you you have some talent which others don't have in that aspect you are I'm, I'm just using the word superior in that aspect but where comes the problem is when I will try to convince the world that this is far more important than the others are you able to follow again inferiority of the in so many areas I don't lack that. In, in so many areas, I lack certain, certain skills, which is natural. What is wrong in that? Because one person can't do everything. To cover up this, to cover it up, what the human being does, they try unconsciously to compensate for that by exaggerated efforts. By exaggerated efforts, they try to prove their Superiority. Why? Because not having this, they are feeling mm -hmm. inferior. So scrutinizing your person means what now at the level of the intellect? Honor and dishonor is one level, is one aspect. Another aspect of scrutinizing your personality is when you are praised in the areas of your skill, you are praised. When you are dishonored, in the areas where you lack skill, you are dishonored. All of them. Are you able to connect now? If somebody were to tell me, Aparna, if somebody were to tell me, Sir, you make wonderful sambar, sir. We have never tasted the sambar like the way that you make. Na, what I should understand? Huh? Uh, their affection, they are simply showing their affection, that's all. Sambar is because I'm tasting it. No. Yeah, I'm also tasting the same. How you follow what I'm saying? It is just somebody is being very uh, somebody is being very polite and affectionate, that's all. Uh, I can't take it into my opposite of that is another thing. Because I know I don't have a I know that 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 honor there is not the real honor. You follow? That honor there is not something that is real. I know this is what I can do. I know this is what I cannot do. There between the two, there is no. This is called scrutinizing your person at the level of the intellect. If you understand it like that you will not have the problem of honor and dishonor. Secondly, you will not fall for flattery. Second is you will not fall for flattery. Otherwise, all human beings fall for flattery. Hmm? We have some work. Assuming that there's no work I have, I myself don't have any work. So somebody is, uh, I have some work and I'll call Kolathur and say, Kolathur, it will, if you don't Lecture and other than you on the white sheet, what other lecture and other, isn't it? So, the most important thing in the lecture is the white sheet covering. Huh? Right. Supposing if I call him and say, There are 10 people, there are 10 people who can do that. I am giving you an opportunity to serve. Na. What the ego will say? What the ego will say? What do you go? Oh, there are already 10 people. Huh? I have something else to do, sir. Hmm? Flattery. What is flattery? 
இங்க வரலன்னா அவ்வளவுதானா தட் இஸ் கால்ட் பிளாட் ஹியூமன் பீங் ஃபால்ஸ் ஃபார் திஸ் வீக்னஸஸ் திஸ் இஸ் ஸ்க்ரூட்டினைசிங் அட் த லெவல் ஆஃப் த this is scrutinizing at the level of the intellect third thing is because of this lack of understanding your life is so much revolving around the opinions of others constantly worried about what others say what others don't say even the dress we wear is also for others only isn't it you follow looking at yourself through the eyes of the others is weakness again i repeat looking at yourself through the eyes of the others through the eyes of the others means through the others words things are therefore what do you do you necessarily have to keep pleasing them you necessarily have to keep pleasing them because only if you keep pleasing them they will their eyes will say all the good things about you and the very effort you make to please you feel very irritated after a after a period of time that's how you get into a that's how at the level of the intellect you you complicate the life are you okay till now ah uh, this is scrutinizing at the level of the intellect don't ask how to overcome all this is don't ask how to overcome if you understand the absurdity of all this repeatedly understand the absurdity of this that's how you will outgrow listening to all this at the end of it don't ask what to do now sir repeated understanding will make you to understand the absurdity of this the very understanding of the absurdity of this you will drop it are you following this is scrutinizing at the level of the intellect then comes at the level of the mind at the level of the mind what is scrutinizing yourself the procession of joy and sorrow life is a procession of joy and and the sorrow jump with joy and sink with sorrow as and when they appear as and when they appear i jump with joy and sink in sorrow so what is scrutinizing your personality at the emotional level witnessing the procession of joy and and sorrow remember that example he gives mr joy you are a very rare visitor thanks for coming mr sorrow you are a very mr sorrow you are a very frequent visitor you, you are also <laughs> welcome oh my god the way he says it so beautiful it is the way swami ji says it. mr joy you are a very rare where you come very rarely up you come very rarely and leave very very soon also but mr sorrow you come and you just sit and you don't and you don't leave all so you witness you witness both huh? this is scrutinizing your person at the level of the emotion they necessarily have to alternate therefore you become a witness they necessarily have to alternate each other when there is a sorrow that sorrow is going to be followed by a joy and when there is a joy that joy has to be followed that that joy will necessarily be followed by a sorrow yeah. that's why the old uh, the old age wisdom grandmothers will say if you laugh too much you'll say don't laugh too much they they they'll always say don't laugh don't laugh too much don't get too excited why because next thing that is going to come will drown you 
you follow because in in excitement you are at a height and when you fall and when you fall the heights you go and when you fall you collapse today what is happening at the emotional level people just to go high and high and high they just want that high all the time not realizing that that high can that high will necessarily be followed by a fall valley and peaks and valley yeah correct peaks and and valley in the ground there will never be a peak or a valley where there is a valley there will be a there will be a peak mountain peak where there is a mountain peak you drop you see there will be a there will be a valley below both both alternates everything in life teaches you how both alternate but the mind refuses to look at life the mind refuses to look at life summer will be followed by the winter and winter will be followed by the the summer it's so clear it is it is so so clear but the mind will not want to accept it the mind will always want to be in that high not realizing that the high you get the high you get the fall will be first all the people who are getting into some kind of an addiction why it is so painful to get out of that the high any of these addictions i am talking i am talking about addictions in terms of intoxicants they give you the the high the moment the effect of it wanes down the moment the effects of that high wanes down what happens you hit rock bottom now what do you have to do to get to that high again take it more take it more how long can you take it how long can you keep taking it you collapse you follow so at the level of the emotion scrutinizing your personality means what you understand that you will be in the alternate mode clear yeah. this is called mood swing ore mood swings are there sir mood nale swing aanadha adhu per mood isn't it there is if there is a stability means then there is no then there is no swings there there is a stability so at the at the emotional levels scrutinizing your personality means the stability hmm? opposite of that is a swing what is the swing moving from one extreme to the other extreme we have always seen that remember this we always discuss this it's a pendulum understand it as a as a pendulum you will know when the pendulum is moving to the right it's not only moving to the right if it is only moving to the right it will be eternally moving to the right but it's not only moving to the right when it is moving to the right it is gathering momentum to come to the left when it is going to the left it is not eternally going to the left it is gathering momentum to come to the right this pendulum is the opposite this pendulum cannot be this pendulum is the fact of life so scrutinizing your person means what now understand that is the effect it's a procession of joy and sorrow third one physical body beautiful physical body at the level of the physical body as you old as you age 
you want to appear younger and younger. As you age, you want to appear younger and younger. Have you ever observed? The person at thirties will behave like twenties. You always want to be younger than. You always want to be younger. Two things at the level of the body. One is always wanting to be younger. Second is the then the the non-acceptance and the resistance to disease. The non-acceptance and the resistance and the fight that you have with disease. Not to overcome it. Oh, why a God is crying and sitting in depression because of it. Uh, are you able to follow? So scrutinizing your person at the level of the body, scrutinize whether do you have these weaknesses. What is meant by scrutinize your person means analyze do you have these weaknesses. What is it? The wish to look and behave younger. That's how absurd it is. Sixty-year-old fellow behaving like a twenty-year-old fellow. How ugly it will be! <laughs> Correct. A seventy-year-old fellow behaving like a thirty-year-old fellow is is ugly. But the whole life, the human being does it. They wish to. They wish to look younger, and they behave. And they behave. Yes, doing it. I am not saying what you should wear, what you should not wear. Ah, please, Shankar, in one of potungo. Yeah. what you wear what you don't wear is not what we are discussing that weakness that weakness what is that weakness young means beautiful old age means unwanted useless that notion are you able to follow young means beautiful wanted old means useless ugly unwanted because of this wrong notion what the human being does they try to they try to look young and behave behave young so body conscious so so body conscious so body conscious so body conscious that you are so preoccupied thinking about your body all the time so body conscious that physical body takes up most of the most of the time we are not saying ignore it be indifferent and healthy the upanishad says apyayantu mamangani vak pranas chakshu shrotramato Alam Indriya Nicha Sarvani. That is Upanishadic prayer. It 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 talks about Mama Angani, Mama Angani. Let all my limbs, Shrotramato, Balam Indriya Nicha Sarvani. Let all my Indriyas have have Balam strength. That is Upanishadic prayer. So we are not discussing about. We are not saying uh, be be. Be careless to the body. Don't pay. Attention. That's not what we are saying. It either the that weakness of wanting to the the weakness of resisting, thinking it as wrong, thinking it as thinking it as wrong. You follow? Why do you do that? Again, because we have not scrutinized it rightly, hmm? it will age. Another problem is another problem is 
the diseases the fear of the fear of contracting a disease is more than actual actually getting it hmm? why because fear of death the fear of dying the fear of dying when we say fear of dying doesn't mean uh, suicidal tendencies uh, doesn't mean suicidal tendencies means what five metaphorical changes birth growth up to birth birth and growth we are okay the rest of the three we are not okay of the five metaphorical changes we are okay with the first two what is the first two birth and growth the other three we don't want what are the other three disease decay death birth growth disease decay death these are the these are the changes a person obsessed with the body always concerned about the health we have ever seen people always they they talk about their body they talk about their diseases they talk about what is right food what is wrong food what is healthy food what is any healthy food he says uh, every day checking the weight yeah. so they have to check what is there to check the weight every day have the weighing machine in the bathroom and keep and keep checking the and keep checking the weight for what obsession to the physical body it is because of the obsession to the oh my god today half a, half a kg is now i have to reduce now i have to reduce now i have to reduce oh for obsession obsession with health scared of disease scared of disease that is good observe whether do you uh, we are not saying coat disease no don't be scared of it because inevitable aspect of physical body is inevitable aspect of physical body is disease some diseases will be will be there yeah some diseases will be there with eight deformities we still worship ashtavakra yeah அஷ்டவக்கரானே பேர் அந்த அஷ்டவக்கரன்ற பேருக்கு மீனிங்கே அதா அஷ்ட மீன்ஸ் இன் சன்ஸ்கிரிட் அஷ்ட மீன்ஸ் எயிட் வக்ரம் மீன்ஸ் டிஃபார்மிட்டி ஸோ எயிட் டிஃபார்மிட்டிஸ் யூ கான்ட் ஈவன் பெயிண்ட் தட் பெல் யூ கான்ட் ஈவன் பெயிண்ட் தட் ஃபெல்லோ ஹவு கேன் யூ ஈவன் ட்ரா தட் ஃபெல்லோ வித் எயிட் டிஃபார்மிட்டி ஸோ டெஃபினெட்லி ஒன் திங் இஸ் வெரி கிளியர் ஹீ கான் சிட் இரட் ஹீ கான்ட் வாக் இரட் தட் மச் இஸ் வெரி that much is very clear with so many deformities and yet he was very and yet he was very free why because the right scrutinizing and understanding opposite of that is so worried about the body so worried about the body you worry about the body because you think you are the body you you worry about the body so much because your entire personality is on the the body what i wear what i don't wear how i look how i why don't look we are not saying go ugly we are not saying walk naked we are not saying that we are only saying that obsession are you able to follow that obsession is because of the the body 
the last one material fluctuation what is the material fluctuation again again what is the material fluctuation inflation is opposite inna huh? is there an opposite to inflation in life deflation na deflated na kaathu pudunga irukilliya i thought deflation na tire deflate na kaathu pudungi uttaanga nanchu inflation ku opposite deflation correct ah because i have i have here i i'm hearing only people talking about inflation 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 hmm Mm-hmm. opposite of uh, uh, inflation. opposite of inflation is deflation correct deflation shankar correct da na correct avaru uttukitta da it is correct avaru uttukitta da it is correct whether i am agreeing or not we have lot of fan fan following shankar yeah they all will agree deflation at the material level what is scrutinizing it inflation will be followed by a, a deflation and a deflation will be followed by inflation that's all so for scrutinizing your person you need only one formula at to scrutinize your person at the material physical emotional intellectual level there is only one formula what is that one formula with which you have to scrutinize your person that one formula with which you have to scrutinize your entire personality material physical emotional intellectual is dwandvas so one word you have to use it as a formula to scrutinize are you able to follow dwandvas means pairs of opposites so to scrutinize your person there is only one formula what is that one formula pairs of opposites life equals dwandvas life equals pairs of opposites and you necessarily have to encounter both in your lifetime hmm? again life equals dwandvas and you necessarily will encounter both in your lifetime so scrutinizing your person means how much you are affected by the pairs of opposites that is what is scrutinizing means hmm? so what is scrutinizing means scrutinizing means how much are you affected how much are you disturbed by the pairs of opposites and if you see some pair all human being have a weakness either somebody will have a weakness at the material level somebody will have a weakness at the physical level somebody will have a weakness to a pair at the emotional level intellectual level but nevertheless there are weaknesses at all layers of the personality because of not understanding this what dwandvas life means a flow the banks are dwandvas again life means a flow river the river is the river is a river because of the banks it is the banks that keeps the river are you okay if the bank goes what happens to the water the water will spread all over and disappear very fast so it is the banks that keep the river going so life the water flow is held by the banks the flow of life is held by the banks what is the banks that hold the flow of life dwandvas from outside it looks like opposite but on deeper scrutiny you understand what both the banks are interconnected you don't see it hmm? both the banks from outside the banks looks like opposites again i repeat purida 
விஜய் புரியுது இல்ல அந்த ஃப்ரம் த அவுட் சைட் இட் லுக்ஸ் லைக் ஆப்போசிட்ஸ் டூ பேங்க்ஸ் லுக்ஸ் லைக் டூ ஆப்போசிட் பேங்க்ஸ் பட் ஆன் டீப்பர் ஸ்க்ரூட்டினி யூ அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் வாட் they are not two opposite banks they are held together they are held together for one cannot exist without the one bank cannot exist without the other bank one bank of one side of the river one bank of the river is so dependent on the other bank therefore what do you understand if you have to scrutinize your life you have to scrutinize your person you need to understand what is this life what is this life life is the the flow what is the flow dwandu the flow of experiences banked by the dwandvas it means you will necessarily go through go through both you will necessarily go through because of ignorance what the human mind wants to do keep the one and destroy the eliminate the other because of human ignorance you want to keep one bank of the river strong and ensure that the other bank gets wiped out try it out all are trying it out isn't it <laughs> what try it out everybody is trying that only yeah. trying to keep one bank strong and the other bank to be eliminated what you don't understand is when you eliminate that bank by default the other also goes away why because both are so dependent on each other both are so dependent on each other it means it means it means what it's two sides to the same coin life is a coin now you understand life is like that life is a coin you cannot have a coin one sided coin <laughs> is it possible nowhere in the world you can mint a coin with one side isn't it other side la onnu print adiklana kuda there will be the other side correct so life is the coin that will necessarily have two sides what are the two sides the two sides is called dwandvas why it is called dwandva at any point of time you can only see one side of the coin at any point in time in life you can only see one side of the coin and by seeing that one side you ignore negate or miss the other now what is the right understanding this side of the coin has another side you flip it and see clear yeah. joy varumbodhu you flip it and see what you will see in it ha uh, when there is a joy you flip it and see what you will see in it ha uh, what you will see what you will see when you flip joy sorrow ha uh, when you flip sorrow when you flip sorrow what will you see joy ha huh? it means it means what now it means what you are unnecessarily giving an exaggerated value scrutinize your person it means what now you are unnecessarily giving it an exaggerated value and you are suffering not because of the two sides of the coin you are suffering because of the exaggerated value that you have given so scrutinizing your person means what now stop giving exaggerated values hmm stop giving exaggerated values if you stop giving exaggerated values where will you end up in middle path as a next topic which will continue next week but for today we only understand this what scrutinizing your person means understanding that life is a coin if you can understand life as the river it's okay but better would be 
better would be to understand it as a, as a coin. Coin means two sides. When you are seeing one side, you flip it, you will see the other side. It means what? In joy, you will see a sorrow. In sorrow, you will see a, a joy. It means, it means what? Great confusion, sir. Huh? Isn't it? It means what? Highly confused. Joy, sorrow. What should I see? Hey, why are you confused? Hey, why are you torturing and confusing us? Flip and see, flip and see, flip and see. Now, what should I see now? Joy lo saro parango, saro lo joy lo parango. What do I, what do I do now? Huh? You follow? At any point in time, you will be experiencing only one side of the coin and don't give it an exaggerated value. That's what it means. Flipping it and seeing means, flipping it and seeing means you will be experiencing only one, but don't give it an exaggerated value. Mind tends to give the exaggerated value. So to scrutinize your person at the material, physical, emotional, intellectual level, there is only one formula. What is the formula? Coin. Coin. The coin line are the Yes, remember? Coin. Hmm? It's like tossing the coin. Probability. Huh? Isn't it? it is like tossing the is like tossing the tossing the coins. Now what you head in the naturally what will you tend to think? Hmm? Naturally, what will you tend to think? Head only, isn't it? Continuously something will fall. You will start expecting a pattern. What is the pattern? Head. And over what you tell one the and over what tail on the garlic, isn't it? Finished. Finished. We live life on probabilities, not on absolute certainties. Because it's the coin that is tossed up. We live life on probabilities, not on certainties. This is called objectivity, inner strength. This is called objectivity. This is called inner, inner strength. That you live life based on, based on probability. What is the probability? In Nikki happiness, thank God, I am happy today. You know that I am happy today. You are, you are gone. Hmm? Sorrow has come and it's not going to leave me at all. I am finished. Again, it's wrong. You follow? So what is scrutinizing your person? Understand life as the coin. Probability. A person drinks and drives 200 times and reached home safely. Hmm? A person drinks and drives and reaches home safely 200 times. So from that, a law or from that, a conclusion is formed. What is the conclusion? What is the conclusion this, this fellow will form in his head? What will be the conclusion that fellow will form in his head? Only if I drink, I can drive safely, sir. Only if I drink, I can drive. Safely. It's not the 200 times that you reach safely. In the probability, it may be the first time itself you may meet with something. You follow? Therefore, scrutinize your person. How do you scrutinize? Coin. Coin and nartho. Tossed. Tossed coin. Life is the tossed coin. In our posing three years. Whatever. But one thing will come and you have to take it. Angada Karma Yoga comes and gives you the strength. Tossed coin. Tossed coin la naal gadigam. Inna naal gadigam. Toss the coin naal varum. 
Ravindran. What are the four? Hmm? Oh, wait, sir. I'll check with Rishika and come back. Yeah. I'll check with Rishika and come back. You see. Huh? Hmm. So, Vijay. Our, our Rishika to confirm on invert. Huh? What are the four? You may get exactly what you want. You may get more than what you want. You may get less than or this is life. Scrutinizing your person means a understanding of this <laughs> and whatever happens, whatever happens, you accept it and continue to do what you ought to do. Are you able to follow? Of the four, something will come. Accept it. And then what do you do? Continue to do what you ought to. So yeah, this is scrutinizing your person. If you scrutinize it like that, you come to a, you will, you will naturally conclude about the middle, middle path. So the next topic is keep to the, keep to the middle path, which we will continue next week.